Hello and welcome to Footy Flashbacks. Has there ever been a better player? I'm not sure there has. My experience of watching footy dates back to only a fraction of the game's history. Actually, more than I'd care to admit. But wiser judges than me have accorded Lee Matthews the title of greatest ever player. He was squat, short-legged and barrel-chested. A rover who could mix it with the Giants. A pocket battleship. There's Lee Matthews, number three, going after the game. And it looks like a goal. However, out comes Henry, uh, picked up here by Lee Matthews. Looking for Matthews. Oh! Stands to play the seniors, watching the reserves. Look at that little Lee Matthews over there. Doesn't he run like Barney Rubble out of the Flintstones? So everyone who I, even to this day, anyone that I know through Hawthorne will always call me Barney because that was my, was my Hawthorne nickname. Injury has been occurred now for two or three minutes and it looks too bad for him to continue. Lee Matthews with the ball. There's Bob Murray there, number six. He picks it up and drives it out towards the half forward flank and Lee Matthews who takes a fine mark. Three or four times now he's inability to carry the injury has been proven. In the 20 points the difference. Matthews, always a long way out, 65 yards, there's Hudson in the goal square, Neil behind him, Lawrence in front of him, it's a big kick, don't tell me he's put it through! But so, you can, so you can control the half, well, control I mean, the forward line? You say what was, I mean I just never got tall enough to play centre uh, half forward, but I was kind of, I mean what I ended up becoming... You'd like to play centre half forward? Well, you know. Bit, bit of hypothetical because I never got tall enough. So basically, you, be, you became, you know, I was a small player, obviously, you mm. know, 178 centimetres, pretty small for football standards. But I was able to, in the days when you used to have the first rover and the second rover, um, I would, uh, I would spend, I don't know, depending upon which way the wind was blowing, mm. uh, part of the time on the ball and a lot of the time deep in the forward line. And I like playing deep in, in the forward line. And, um, so I guess I was a goal kicking um, midfielder. Yeah. So. When I was in my prime, I reckon I could end up getting the ball against anyone one-on-one. -on -one. Um, because you could anchor those legs well, there. Well, I, I, yeah, I could you either could mark against them. the little blokes, the little back pockets. Mm. If they played taller people on me, then uh, then I reckon I could bring the ball to the ground and beat them at ground level. So that that was probably how I... That I was very happy playing deep forward then. Yeah. You got the most votes um, in the Brownlow for a bloke who never won the medal. Yeah, yeah. Um, do you think the Brownlow is credible, seeing that so many great players haven't won it? Well, no, no, it's only, you can only win it one year. I mean, great players, in a way, the club you played for, like, in 10 years' time, it's more the, it's more that Hawthorne probably, uh, what's the word, except me as one of those because I played there. Coaching is very much an off-field role, and coaching is just, king is dead, long live the king. As soon as you walk out the door and there's a new coach sitting in your office, all you were was another off-field person who helped out. Whereas players, the, the, the players out on the field, everyone sees, you know, you're in the, the brown and gold jumper and so. But the answer to that question is, I don't vote for anybody. Uh, I'd like to vote for one club, to be honest. But